thanks for coming along. Um, so this is basically a pet project uh, done by myself and James. So what we've done is we've built uh, our package for AFL. Uh, we've called it Fitzroy because that's the pub where we first met, the old Fitzroy <coughs> Hotel in Wollongong. Um, and it's also the name of a folded AFL team, which obviously merged with the Brisbane Lions and now we're up in Brisbane. So there you go. Okay, um, so what we've done is we've created this R package and then we do a, um, some series of things where we're trying to create engagement for fans who are into footy but are struggling to get in to analyse the game. Right? Okay. So that's me, I'm the Simpsons character, and that's uh, James, for reference. <laughs> okay, so why do an R package for AFL? So I saw this tweet and I think it's pretty important. Um, and I really like the last sentence, so we need to teach safe stats. So I think part of that with football analysis is everyone having access to the same data and also everyone being able to reproduce the work they see if they would like to. Right? So if everyone has the same data, if everyone's work is reproducible, you can go away, you can question, you can change things up if you want to give it a go as well. Okay, so why else do it? So there's going to be a lot of Twitter posts that I've clipped. So why else do an AFL package? Well, so we've got a series of tweets from Adrian, Matt, Anthony, all footy fans, all just tweeting out champion data. Hey, how can I get some access? Um, we have Ryan, who wrote a piece on The Raw. So I don't know if anyone knows The Raw, but it's basically a website where anyone who has an interest in sport can write their own article. Ryan's decided to write sort of an analytical piece on the Freo Dockers. We won't hold that against him. Um, and, but the first comment on the article is, hey, why don't you include this variable? And Ryan's gone, well, actually, I don't have access to it. Right? So very obvious things people aren't able to do simply because they don't have access. Um, this is Warren Treadray, a Port Adelaide superstar. So he works in the media, so he did an article on just goal-kicking accuracy. And again, one of the first comments, hey, do you reckon you could compare some players? Sorry, I don't get access all that often. Uh, this is Ron Connolly, a sports writer for The Age. Same thing, don't get access all the time. So data access is a pretty key issue. So to write analytical AFL pieces, which is what me and James really want to encourage everyone to give a go. You need data. It's kind of obvious. So what have people been doing and why hasn't there been a lot of AFL analytics pieces written? So basically people have been copying and pasting AFL data and they are probably still copying and pasting that <laughs> AFL data. Right. I'm not kidding. So we have, again, Twitter conversation. Um, so someone's asked for some AFL data. Uh, Nick's kindly going to provide it, but he is copying and pasting AFL player ratings. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there are 22 players on each team per game. Um, nine games around, 196 games over a year, so can blow out quite quickly. And Nick's doing a good thing and collecting the data for people. Um, same thing here, um, he's collecting metres gained from an app and again one of the first things, you could probably do that quicker in R um, and Nick's unfortunately given up there because he's not that much into stats, which is sad. Um, this is a graph, uh, it's done in Excel, so this is pretty interesting, it shows like metres gained versus turnover. Um, and he's being hailed for his patience to collect the data to begin with. Um, obviously, we should all hail Excel spreadsheets, <laughs> especially here. Okay, so what happens is data essentially becomes this barrier to entry, right? So to 
get AFL data, you have to be able to scrape a website. So it might be AFL tables, it might be footy wire or the AFL website, but you have to be able to scrape it. Um, few people have written pieces on, you know, the AFL should make data more accessible for people. Okay, so you put yourself in their shoes. So you want to do your own analysis for AFL. You can't get the data. Data is available, like you see it. You see it online, the AFL website, AFL tables, footy wire, so it's a bit of a tease. Um, but you have to manually copy it or scrape it. Or you pay a champion data lots and lots of money. All right, so they are terribly good options when you think about uh, what they just want to do. They might just want to do like a plot, and to do a plot of data, they have to first teach themselves how to scrape, which is quite a high barrier to entry. Um, yeah, so getting data is just this roadblock. It's hard to get over the hump. Um, yeah, so this is just some more uh, Twitter conversations. This, so I think this goes to you know, what is reproducibility? Um, I think uh, Luke here just wants to learn some R using footy, uh, but he's unable to get his hands on the data. Um, yeah, this is just a piece written about, you know, data access should be a thing. Uh, this is an interesting one. So I found this. So this is someone who's uh, learning R and has done some plots in it using R Studio, which is great. Um, but then this is the same person two years later saying he wishes he knew more R and being stuck with Excel and it's taking 30 minutes to calculate out some AFL stuff for him. Um, this is NRL. I mean, we're in Queensland, so similar thing. Would like to build a model, need data, need to get R and Python first. Um, and the other thing I think is important is with regards to um, how people come to numbers, right? So growing up, I really liked fantasy sports, and you could say it was sort of like a bit of a gateway drug for me. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a great way to engage youth. And to do that, you sort of need to be able to give them access to the data, because cards aren't that popular now. People are playing like fantasy sports online, so they're doing their dream team. Super coach, draft stars, everything else. Okay, so data access is needed to grow a sport analytically. I think everyone can sort of get on board with that. So if we look at other sports, so this is NHL, has NHL scraper, which is ice hockey. Uh, Pitcher and Laman, they're for baseball stats. Uh, Deuce provides tennis data. Uh, Baller provides NBA data from basketball reference. And there's NFL Scraper, which is American football, and that provides play-by-play -play -play data from the ESPN website. And I like their vignette, and it's got this pretty good quote about how just allowing data access allows anyone with an interest in R, they can sort of reproduce their own sort of metrics, and it allows the growth of the football analytics community as a whole. Okay, so this is where Fitzroy comes in which is the work with uh, myself and James. So Fitzroy is cool because it allows you to get access to data for fans, and um, we're allowing fans to recreate content that they see online. So we have sort of two main goals, is to lower the barriers of entry into doing AFL starts, and to encourage people to do reproducible things. So access is important. So when the ABS stopped charging for data in 2005, there's this quote on the website just about the benefits of just making data accessible to people, right? And everything that comes along with that. Okay, so how we're trying to do engagement. So we really like Tidy Tuesday. So um, James has created a Slack group where anyone can sign up. And we do this thing called Wednesday Wonk where we just basically give you like a graph template and you can go away and plot away to your heart's content. And again, it's sort of like the same theme sort of pick up. You see a graph and the first thing you want to do is see something else, right? And if you're 90% of the way there, where all you have to change is the variable or the relationship you want to see, I think it's quite an easy way to get engagement. 
Um, and it, so there were more chats going on in the Slack just around, oh, how do you do this? Here's my code on how to do that. Um, the other thing um, I do is if you tweet at me, make me a user, I'll recreate any AFL graph that you can see online if it's made using AFL tables or footy wire data. Like, seriously, I'll do it. <laughs> so this is uh, Jeff. So Jeff wanted to see the win-loss percentage of Port Adelaide versus Adelaide after a showdown because he sort of feels as though his team gets up for a showdown and is crap afterwards. And this is Jeff again, a few weeks later, just answering some questions at work, which is good. And he's able to answer questions about, you know, like something that happened this year. Um, this is me recreating a Supercoach fantasy graph. Um, this is the meters gain graph from before. Um, so yeah, so this is Ryan, so hopefully it is the incentive he needs to learn some R. And the other point about this is understanding. So like, what does it mean to actually know what's going on? So if you take something simple from the AFL on just averages, right? So before you weren't able to get access to the data, so you couldn't question any number that's been put out. Well, the first comment here is, well, actually, these averages are incorrect. Um, this is a quiz from the AFL website, like what round did Gary Ablett Senior bring up 100 goals? Uh, the correct answer is not appearing on the AFL website's quiz, uh, which you can recreate now with Fitzroy. So what they've done is they've read the row number instead of the round number because Gary Ablett missed a few games uh, in 1993. Okay, um, the other thing is sometimes things just aren't that simple. Um, so this is just a graph that's supposed to be the standardized score of points for versus points against for uh, every AFL team on a year-by-year -year basis. And I looked at it and I thought it looked a bit weird because it's supposed to be standardized to 0, 1, but you know, all the data sort of seems to be within one. And before, like, you would just have to sort of take it as is. But now uh, with Fitzroy, I can sort of recreate it and I can tweet him, say like, hey, what's going on here? Um, he's able to respond. Um, and he's also able to show me how he got the numbers for his dashboard because we're using the same data source, right? which I think is pretty important, um, even for very simple things like just a Z score, but also the more you read AFL, like you might want to create someone's ELO model, you might want to tweak a parameter, that sort of thing. Um, so our next steps, uh, we want to do more blog posts, um, which where we introduce basic sort of modeling concepts and how to do different sort of graphs. Uh, we want to get better at this Wednesday Womp thing, um, so try to encourage more people to do it, but also to do it and use other packages as well. So this one's using GG Animate. Um, we want to encourage more reproducible blog posts. Uh, so this one's done by Graham, which is pretty cool. Um, and we want to add in the AFL W data by the time the next season starts. Okay, so my final thoughts are how do you create an analytics community for AFL without easy access to that data? Um, what kind of consequences does data access have for the makeup of the community if it's only restricted to people who can scrape or people who are able to pay. And what does that mean for the engagement of fans? Uh, the end, go Eagles. Thank you. Thanks, Laura, that was awesome. Uh, we've got time for a few questions. No, no questions, just comments. Absolutely brilliant. This is exactly what we should be doing. Perfect. It's getting the engagement from people who are not normally engaged with this kind of thing and bringing them into the art hole. My specific thing is theoretical statistical analysis of sports results, and I find that to be a, a similar type of thing, maybe from the other side, but getting people interested in statistics through sports because it's out there on the streets. It's street statistics. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. There's another one. How do we get onto the um, so, yeah, so James posted it, so I think he's 
I'll, I mean, you can say, just hit me up. I'll put you in a tweet with it. And you'll put them on. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to join the Slack, um, let me know and I'll get James to get you in. And yeah, do plenty of graphs and ask heaps of questions. Sorry, well, what score? Like, you can't predict, obviously you can't predict Paul Mitchell cracking 195, so we just go, yeah. which cost would be my entire match score. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, because I'm captain yeah. probably front you, but he cracked 195. But anyway, it's like, you know, like, yeah. I mean, what kind of model do you use? Like, you know, um, if you come to maths and sport in a couple of weeks, I'll talk about a player model. Oh. No, um, I also did a blog post on just, like, looking at average super points. Super coach points for and against, um, and yeah, you can do whatever you want really. Um, I'm not sure what's available through champion data and what's great, but I'll be really interested in the data that kind of like tracks, like the, the, the player tracking data. Have yep. you done anything else to that? Can you get that? Okay. Or do you have to pay for champion data? Um, you can scrape that. It's a bit if you are because they sell a subscription to the Herald Sun, so you have to pay for the Herald Sun to be able to log in to be able to scrape champion data. In a nutshell, yep. Have you done that? Um, no, I'm a PhD student and I don't pay for the Herald Sun. <laughs> um, so originally I scraped the data and so we've just added the scraper function. So if you load it, you basically get everything up till the most recent round, and then if you haven't updated it, it will just look at the last round of data you have, and then you scrape the most recent sort of data.